Good morning and God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. It's my great pleasure to bring your daily nourishment to you again today. That God will use to nourish us and increase us so that we can nourish others also. Our topic today is driving passion one. And what is that driving passion one? God's plan. Remember I said that everybody has a driving passion, a controlling force, a controlling assumption that guides your life down the road of life. And this one says, your driving passion as a minister, as a, as a pastor, as a church leader, as a church worker, must be God's plan. Because God has a plan. He's a God that implements and works according to his plan and timetable. He has not left the world or the church without a plan, a great plan, a profound plan, a mysterious plan that only him knows for, for alone. So if you really want our church to grow, want our ministry to flourish, we must see God's plan. And if God has called you into ministry, brought you into leadership, in his kingdom, in his work, you must walk. What should be your driving force is to walk according to God's plan, not your own plan. Even due to the Father, when you are posted to a local church, or you are sent to pastor a church, or to plant a church, you must ask, what is God's plan for that church? Because from time immemorial, he has a plan for everything. If you read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, he said, God has planned our salvation before even we were born. At the beginning of the world, he has planned for us. And the scripture I want to read is that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of king to search out a matter. That's Proverbs 25, verse number 2. That God concealed his plan. He kept it to himself. He, that plan, it is where you come as a king, as a priest unto the law, as a leader in his vineyard, as a worker in his vineyard, as somebody partnering with God. You ask him for that plan, he will reveal it to you. The desire to know God's plan for that particular church, that particular ministry, should be the number one driving passion of our heart, of our life as gospel ministers. A lot of us today, we walk according to our own plan. We devise our own plan without seeking for the input of the Lord through His Spirit, through His guidance, through His Word. That what does, where does He want us to go? What does He want me to do in this ministry? That's one grace the Lord has granted me over the years. I follow His plan. I ask for His plan. I try to discern His plan and try to do everything according to his plan. Because if we don't walk according to God's plan, we'll be walking in our own energy, in our own power, and it will be abysmal failure. And so when you are transferred to a church, or you plant a church, or you start a church, or you are taken to a, place, a church, even as a missionary, as a church planter, as an evangelist, Lord, what is your plan? For this community, for this, uh, what kind of church should I plant here? You need to ask. Even in denominational churches, where our churches should not be the same. Because the church in this, in a gated community, in government reserve area, and where everybody is high up there, or middle class there, that church fulfilling, I mean, the way you run that church, and the focus, and God's plan for that church, might be different for, to a church in a, in a rundown community. It's important to follow God's plan. Now, and that should be the driving passion of every pastor, every church leader, or church planter. Definitely, God has a plan, vision for every church. Yes. So even if your denominational leader has transferred you there, go and ask from the Lord also, what is your plan for this church? I practiced that many years ago when I was pastoring a church, and I was taken to a new area. I was asked to go and pioneer a church in a new area. I was given about five, six members that follow us from our, one of our branches, so we have to start the church. I had to go to the law and say, what do you have for this church? Are you, did you really bring me there, here? And what do you want me to do here? And he has to lay it out for me. Of course, it took time. But I designed God's plan. And I built a church along that, uh, that plan. And in the five years that I spent in that church, it became a very strong, dynamic church, growing in every area. Until I was taken away, and somebody else was brought there, he almost killed the church. Because by the time I got back to that church, I was allowed to go back there. Twelve years later, 
I wept. What I saw was not really encouraging. Different to the plan that God gave to me that I understand. And I want to say it to the next pastor that is brought, my, uh, my successor, but he will never have none of it. I said, let me hand over to you. Let me share things with you. He said, no. And he ran the church down. He ran the church down. And that is, that is what is happening in so many of our churches today. That's why sometimes transfer of pastors is doing a lot of havoc to God's plan for local churches. Care needs to be taken. Until the church discovers God's plan for her in, rela in relation to her area of ministry, effectiveness will be put in abeyance. A lot of churches are not effective because we are not following God's plan. A lot of ministers are not effective because we are not following God's plan. We are following our plan or we are following somebody's plan. God's plan, God's plan for a particular church is distinct, different, and unique. It's our duty to seek it out. It's our responsibility as pastors, as leaders, as kings, as priests to seek out God's plan for that ministry. Ministry may look the same. The name may look the same. But they are different. Okay, look at it. Look at the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of John the Baptist. He looks the same, but they are radically different. John the Baptist was sent to the Jews. That's why he could preach hard and gloom and do messages. And yet the people repented. They came weeping for their sins, coming for baptism of repentance. But Jesus was sent not only to the Jews, to the Gentiles also. So he, he used miracles, signs, wonders as a bait to bring money to the law so it may look the same but radically different so also today the ministry of an evangelist will be different to the ministry of a pastor the ministry of a pastor will be distinct from the ministry of a teacher and the ministry of a teacher is going to be radically different from the ministry of a prophet but today we want to do the same thing we want to reach the same audience we want to reach this with the same strategy with the same focus it is different that's why a lot of ministries, they are not making mighty impact in their communities. In fact, where the ministry is located should be, should be it's in God's plan. But when you don't ask for it, where you are going to have trouble? There are a lot of people, their ministry should be in the villages. That's where their headquarters, that should be their base. With opportunity to reach out. But why? What, what happened? Everybody wants to come to the city. Because we believe that that's where the money is. That's where the crowd is. That's where this, no, it doesn't work that way. We must work according to God's plan. Ditto to our location. Where you even locate that church, the land you buy, the building you are going to construct, must be according to God's plan. Because he has all these things worked out in detail. But it's until when we seek him and get the direction of his spirit, I wish church leaders will take note of that when we transfer pastors. I wish church leaders will take note of that when we plant churches. Where does God want us to plant a church? Which area does he want us to plant it? What is the land he wants us to buy? What kind of fellowship? What should be the fo focus of the church? Is it to the children? Is it to youth? Is it to adult? Is it even in that adult? Is it to rich people? For example, if you have a church in Victoria Island, if you have a church in Lekki, it's going to be the audience is going to be radically different than to have church in Alimosho. Yeah, it's going to be different. It's the same gospel, the same truth, the same and uh, the same Holy Spirit, but the focus of the ministry and the strategy you use in reaching our evangelism is going to be radically different. So that's what we need to take on. God's purpose, God's plan for a particular church and ministry is distinct and different. Therefore, every leader must, must, true seek, must seek God's face by prayer, by meditation, by study, by research, to find out God's habit for that local church, for that particular ministry. What, what, when it is the ruling passion of the pastor's heart, growth will definitely come. When that is what is controlling you, what is God's will? What is God's purpose? What is God's passion? What is God's plan for this church? And He reveal it to you by prayer, by meditation, by research, by study, and seeking the face of the Lord, in listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you walk according to that, it will result in the growth of the church. It will result in the growth of Each local church is unique in God's plan. No local church comes into being without God's knowledge. Every local church has a purpose to fulfill in God's kingdom. And seek for that, to fulfill that. Every local church must reach our immediate community. It's not every local church that will become 1,000, 100, 5,000, and 10,000. No! In your community, it may be just 200 people. And that 200 people, they are well discipled, they are well trained. They go out and go and multiply, and multiply, and multiply, and multiply. I once knew a church at the city of Ibado. It's just one church. 
I know the leader is late now. It's a church of about maybe 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 about two thousand or three thousand members, and it's just that one branch. But he so disciple everybody that these people, they, in fact, when he was alive, they were supporting more than six hundred missionaries all over the world, and the branch, the members have gone out to plant so many churches and so many ministries just for that one church. That is God's purpose and plan for her. When we shouted together, he said, I didn't have the uh, uh, plan. God didn't give me the plan to start branches, but I should, I, should, I should grow this one. Each of this one will go out and plant branches and plant ministries and have fed the world for Christ. And he fulfilled that before he went to be with the Lord just a few, few, few months ago. Very important that we discover because every church can thrive when God's purpose is a center of interest and attraction. Let God's purpose, let God's plan be the center of interest for your life and for your ministry. His plan are beyond your widest imagination. What he wants to do are beyond your widest imagination. And as you follow God's plan, you'll be surprised at what the Lord will do. The growth he will bring across your way, the blessings he has for you. Because he said in his word, I know the, the plan, I know the thought that I think towards you. It is the thought of peace, not of destruction. Follow his plan and let that be the ruling passion of your life and your ministry will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen.